How's everyone doing? This is Sylvester Gittins coming to you live from Tampa, Florida, giving you another insight into some technology. Today's choice is RSA Security Access Protect and Afford Gate. Are you ready to see some security? This is all in preparation for attending the Ingram One event tomorrow in Dallas. If you're going to be there, I'll see you soon. If not, I'm going to come back with a video for you to let you know how it went. But let's get into this video. Let's, I like to keep them short. Again, the locking down and securing, securing for the net, for the gate with secure ID access. Let's get into it. But before I get into actually what that is, what is RADIUS and why is it important? Remote access dial-in user service is a client-server protocol software that enables remote access servers to communicate with a central server. I just read that from somewhere, but what does that actually mean in everyday terms, right? Today, we're going to be allowing remote users access to internal company resources, but we're going to do it just a little bit more secure, right? We're going to add on that multi-factor authentication. I'm going to show you different ways that we could do it, but today, we're going to focus on using our approved to give me a second form factor into the, I mean, the Florida gate. Can I do eye scanning? Yes. Can I do fingerprinting? Yes. Can I do uh, just a, a, a token? Of course. Authenticate token? Of course. But the day of choice is just approved and denied. I want to show you that our secure ID access can do token with authentication. I keep hearing that they can and this is what I do every day. I do demos for companies. Every day, teaching their sales team, engineering team, how to leverage the ID access. So I just want to bring to you today what I know and what I've learned and share my knowledge with you. So hopefully it helps. Let me know what you think. So let's first get into some of the components in security access. The components that I'm, that I'm leveraging today are going to at least need the enterprise or premium additions to work. Um, so when you get the enterprise or premium edition, it comes with a cloud service. And this cloud service is allows for the uh, has the it hosts the admin console for secure ID access to do your cloud authentication, right? We're gonna be focused only today on an authentication service. We're not gonna get into the risk analytics and single sign on policy. I just showed that in one of my other videos. So if you haven't watched it, I make sure to put a link in it within here so you can go back and watch that. Um, so next piece we're going to talk about the piece that I love this what that for me made RSA great again because before RSA was a little bit hard to deploy in 7.1, 7.2. They did do some enhancements in 8.0, and that's where the birth of this identity rider or IDR you're going to hear me call for short came into. Why do I love this? Because it's simple to use. It does not take a long time to deploy it. I don't have that much time to to uh, to stay in the data center because my job is mostly in front of customers and it's not to be a data engineer. I work with a lot of system engineers for my partners and end users. You're also leveraging like, multiple tools in your environment trying to keep your company safe. So what RSA did is in place is made it simpler to deploy their solution. Um, and it's like a hybrid cloud environment. So you slide in this IDR, this can be played either in the internal network, most likely, or best case scenario that I like to see, and RSA recommends is slide it in the DMZ, um, and then you can use that uh, to talk out to your internal and external apps. So we're going to be leveraging the RADIUS technology and the EC, Enterprise Connector, that's going into my Active Directory resource for this a demo environment. You can use LDAP. Um, so those are some of the things you can leverage there. And uh, and you can connect to a radius application. This one of choice is going to be FortiGate. I'm also going to be doing Cisco ASA soon enough. I'm also going to be doing NetScale and a few other things. And um, again, you can also see that I'm going to leverage my um, my phone to do the authentication. No tokens at all. Like I said, it's token list. You don't even need to put a code in because sometimes putting the code isn't the most ideal situation. And the one thing I think RSA has done a great job of doing is balancing security as well as 
our convenience because you can be secure as heck if it ain't convenient if it's not convenient for your users to leverage they're not going to use it right so uh that's one thing i think they did a great job of doing so uh, one thing to note after the day uh some of the risk-based analytics from the radius doesn't work with it so like doing like things like location-based doesn't work with the um, ladies client, but they've been doing a lot of enhancements, so I see that probably coming soon, hopefully. Um, to me, it doesn't matter because I can do higher print, I can do biometric, I can do approval deny, I can do a thing, I can come, I can use a FIDO token. Do I really need the analytics? You might find that useful. I use those more for my sample based environments when I have that, or just depending on the, each use case is different. We can get into that. If you got questions about it, I'd love to have a conversation and uh, see what your environment has and, and how I can help you out. Um, I think I didn't say this in the beginning. This is my ideas, not RSA or Ingram Micro, just to make sure I put that out there, that disclaimer. This is for us to get his ideas from my experience. So let's go take a look at some screenshots, some short screenshots, because today, since we're doing a VP, VPN integration, as soon as I make that con connection, it drops the connection of my, um, when I'm reflecting my phone to my PC. So I figured I'd just do the screenshots for it so you can take a look at it. In the notes, if you know a solution to what I need to do, I know I can also put on another laptop so if you feel like doing that in this case. If you got another tool or solution that will help me be able to record it a little bit better, use the WebEx now, um, I'm all for it. So this is how it looks normally, right? You're going to have, this is the Florida client console, username and password. But again, if I break into that, which is easy with a traditional, uh, you know, brute force password attack, I'm inside your environment. I'm taking your critical internal applet, I mean, um, um, documents or looking at different, uh, you know, this internal information. You don't want that access. So you want to add some additional security. So we can enter one for approved code, right? And also one thing to know, RSA just came out, well, I think two or three weeks ago, um, the ability to do voice and SMS. As soon as I get my hands on that, I'm going to add that to my demo environment. And I'm going to bring you over um, the good, bad, and the ugly about it. Hopefully, it's all good, but we'll take a look at it again, right? Um, but this one's pretty cool. So uh, once I enter one, it sends me to my cell phone a signing request. It says Radius Fortigate version six is trying to contact me at 9:40 a.m. And one get, I mean, access to Ingram Macro's um, data center. Boom. I have access now. You see 46, 46 second duration, and I'm in there. Quick. No token at all, right? That's the beauty of this. It's quick, easy, and deployed. But what I want to showcase you today is, I think, where we, where RSA really thrives on, right? And, um, and that's behind the scenes. What is actually happening? I'm not going to go into deep dive. This is just a quick um kind of inside look of the user experience but i do want to know what makes rsa um pretty pretty cool so let me get into my uh, i think it's this one right here there we go sign in you might say hold on so that's we just talked about not doing single sign-on i mean not having a username and password the reason why i have that i got a few other people on there and i'm still working on my demo environment but i can protect that front end with uh, um, iPrint, fingerprint, wrist base, I can do that in the beginning. Um, and I will do a demo showing that I can protect that so you can see that also. Um, so I think that'll be pretty cool. So let's get into it, right? The main thing I want to show, where do we do the connections on? And you saw it on that little uh, snapshot. It said Fortigate underscore version underscore 5.6. That's who was talking to her. I created a trust relationship between the Fortigate and security access from here. You might say, Sylvester, hold on. That's nothing special. You can do that with other solutions. All right, okay, I, I hear you. I understand. Can you stop yelling at me at least? Okay. I'm going to show you what RSA makes the bill. This is what I like it the most about it so far, is being able to set different policies. So my high insurance, I use the approval token. You might say, Sylvester, well, that ain't really that secure. I can switch it around. In this case, I want to show the simplicity that we can add security without complexity. All that depends on your environment and the risk tolerance that you have, or I say the actual application that you're protecting, because 
um, you know, just protect the king of the kingdom. You're not going to protect your house as much as they do Fort Knox, right? Um, you're going to have you got to adjust the security as necessary, and this gives you the ability to do it. And you see right here, I got to activate this SMS and voice token code. Once I get that, I'm going to send it over to you because I've been waiting for this. I've been telling them for a while. They finally answered what I wanted. Much as that's still cool, but, you know, what else you got? So I made me a Fortigate modern authentication um, policy, right? So I created my policy for it. And then I connected it to my LDAP source for that enterprise connection. Uh, and then what I also did is I targeted who I want all users allow access and require. Uh, and I took the high, um, highest showers. I could change this, medium, low. One thing to note about radius, you can't use the conditional statements for this. Single sign on environments, we can definitely do that. Uh, but right now for radius, they haven't, they haven't done that, so you have to put required, right? Um, and you can do things as high, medium, or low. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's going to change again. They've been working pretty rapidly. I've been talking to a lot of the product marketing teams at RSA, and they've been spitting this out pretty quickly. So I'm pretty sure it's going to come shortly. Then I would say and finish, and I get up to it. Right? But it's really simple. If you're a Fortinet administrator, you can do this. If you're a Cisco administrator, it's the same as that protocol. And actually, you can see it right here. I have my ASA connected to it's exactly the same build out. The only reason I'm not showing you, I don't really want to disclose my IP address, but we work on that going forward. It's very easy to connect it. I do not leverage authentication manager in my environment. Um, our authentication manager is really great, but for me, I didn't need that for my demo. I think Eric knows a good amount about authentication manager. Um, but you can also connect your authentication manager. Um, environment to your security access environment. And I think that's pretty cool as well because a lot of my accounts I go into, they already have authentication manager. You don't need a rip and replace. It kind of augments it in a way. Um, and this is where I see our Secure ID access has over its competitors is it's a full robust solution. You get one person. And um, if I'm a CIO and you listen to this, just think about it this way. Instead of you having someone doing your tokens, your single sign on, you do all from one solution. Um, and it, it's pretty cool. And it also integrates into their governance and life cycle um, solution as well. So, again, that's probably like four or five people. Now you got that down to one or two people. And that's the money you can put back into your budget. But, again, this is Sylvester for another demo. I hope you enjoyed. If you like it, hit that like button. Share it. Love it. Enjoy it. Um, but I'm out of here. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you soon. Later.